Alright, what's up everyone? Kragan here, and today we're playing Banjo-Kazooie. No, I mean, this is this is a pretty old game from like the 1990s. Man, this is a game that I grew up with personally, and that I thought, you know what? I might as well just share it for everyone else to see. Since I know a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, have never actually played this game. And which sounds crazy, because a lot of them, like, they love platformers, and they're just like, you know, I never really played Banjo-Kazooie growing up, because I never, could never really find it. Either, like, it was accessible, which doesn't really make sense, because it's like Xbox 360, but that's, that's you know, on the case. However, I'm not playing that version, actually. I'm only going to be playing the, um, the N64 version, only because it's more accessible for me, personally. And also, I like this version more because the controls seem a little more complete, since this is the, the main console that the game came on in the first place. And what, one thing I just I loved about this game was the music. Like, Chef's Kiss. The, the composer just really knew what he's going for. Like, with the, with, this was opening sequence alone. Like, with Banjo playing the Banjo, and Kazooie playing the Kazoo, and then you have Mumbo and Tootie, the, the two main cast of characters. And I just really enjoyed the fact that this this song still still is so good, even in 2020, regardless of, like, your tastes in music. I don't know what it is. For me, I just always enjoyed it. Anyway, we're just gonna pick a, pick a file and go. And I, I, I totally forgot about this when I came to play the game, but it's like, there's like, the, the first main cutscene goes on for like, almost like five, or like three minutes. So it's, it's kind of like basically being at a movie theater, like the previews where like you're kind of hoping for to watch the main from like, say, Adam Murray when it's like Spider-Man Far From Home or something, and you're just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm sitting here, trying to watch a movie, came at 7.30, 7.30 30 was the time to come, and they're just like, hey, let's just put with like five minutes of previews, even though we said the movie was starting at 7.30, it's starting at like 7.37, 38, you know? So I'm just like, hey, welcome to Regal Cinemas, I hope you all have your popcorn ready and your cell phones are put away with no flash because you shouldn't be having your cell phones in the movie. Oh, hey, you in uh, row 3B with your phone out, it's still there, and everyone can see it, and everyone's saying, hey, please put your phone away. <laughs> no. You know, because uh, why Why be curious anymore? I, I just think it's so weird that like people still, still have their cell phones out at this point, because like, I get it that like, you want to either tell everyone that like, you're watching the movie or that, you know, you want to maybe keep the movie for yourself. But I just think it's very strange that, like, people are still, like, out here with their cell phones, like their iPhone 11 or iPhone 10, that they're still, like, out here, you know, recording movies illegally. And, like, I get it. Don't get me wrong. Like, when I want, like, like, never mind, never mind. Get off the tangent. But, I mean, like, I don't know. It's just, it's just so weird, like, because, like, I see it, and I'm like, who still, like, has their cell phones on? And then I see, like, either, like, my mom or just, like, some older person just, like, they're like, ooh, my cell phone works. The cops don't get me. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? They don't really... I don't really care that much, you know, but that's just me. Because I feel like back in the trend, like, 19, 1990, whatever, that, like, when the internet had come out, and, like, stuff until we started booming, that, like, that kind of trend would stop, since, like, everyone had it, so they'd be like, hey, let's maybe as a culture stop doing that, but no, they decided, hey, let's just do it, but more. And they can try to, like, break down how, how movies getting caught, but it's like, no, that, like, the people are still going to keep recording. What, what am I even talking about right now? Anyway. Uh, back to the plot of the game. The main plot of the game is that, if you couldn't tell, there's this old witch, Gwantilda, basically wants to kidnap Banjo the Bear's little sister because she's cute or something. I don't really get that part, because, like, because in my opinion, cute and pretty are not the same thing, so I don't really get how you, <laughs> how you, how you think they're the same thing. But I guess she's actually, she wants to harness her cuteness and make it into her prettiness? Well, that's a, that's a whole other thing I don't really get into. But, I mean... It's just it's just weird that 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 is what that is I don't know, it's just weird. I, I like it, but I'm just like what's going on? And then Tootie's out here just saying, Where's Banjo? And then he's like, I don't know, when she could just walk into her house. I've just never understood the fact that like the house is right there, homie. Like what are you doing? Like you just stand there like sightseeing when you're you're his door is open too. Like you just walk inside and everyone's like, No, this is not for me. I don't know. And then she gets kidnapped. And I think it's it's interesting that Kazooie's out here trying to wake up Banjo because she's the only one who can hear because she's awake and Banjo's out here sleeping. Like Yogi Bear on a nice day after, after actually, you know, annoying the, the camp customers. I'm real Yogi Bear, that's a good that's a good show. But I mean Yogi Bear here is like sleeping fifteen hours a day. I mean I can't really complain because I just sleep like twelve hours a day, almost on a minimum at these days. Along with the fact that you know I just like to sleep. Sleep is sleep is <laughs> that's all there is to it. Sleep sleep is a good thing to have. I just like sleeping. But you know, I don't know. But anyway, it looks like uh, we can finally play the game. 
And a cool thing about this game that I like a lot is that you actually the moveset actually changes throughout the game. Like as as the game continues, your moveset gets more diverse because bottles here or goggles boy as Kazooie calls them, you you get you end up getting like more and more move as the game goes on and then as the game goes on you continue to grow so therefore it doesn't stay stagnant in any kind of way and it just you just kind of grow and I, and I like that a lot like I, I i hate games where like the moveset feels stale and even though this game does feel stale at some points it's like as with a, with an ever-changing moveset it allows you to I, don't, I just love this game so much i don't even know what it is it, it just it just makes me so happy to play this game like it, it for me is probably like one of my favorite games like platformer wise because it, it, it gets like Design wise, it's a very colorful game, which I find very, very, very important in the game. It's colorful, it's got great music, and the story is amp. Like, I don't care much for a story for the platformer, but it's just like a, a good game in general, which is what I enjoy a lot, you know? And I, since I, you know, I'm an epic gamer, I figured, you know, I'm gonna just quit, quit while I'm ahead and be like, stop, no, I know the moves already, I know how to play the game, so now I'm just gonna go, go and basically start the adventure. And uh, the cool little thing about this little tutorial level is that they have these six little pieces, honeycomb pieces, that uh, make your life larger if you collect six of them. And uh, this little tutorial level has six hiding in the way. It's just how you're supposed to learn how to play the game, but since I already know how to play the game, I'm just going to go and collect them. And one thing I found very creepy as a kid when I was playing this game is that every little thing in this game has eyes and mouth. Not enough, but like the ability to speak and like that. Like looking back at it now, like it's fine. You know, I'm just I'm just chilling. But like when I was a little kid, like this just scared the hell out of me. Cause I was cause I, I was like the weird kid where like when I watched Toy Story, everyone's like it's a cute movie, but I was like I was like genuinely scared. It looked like my little Blaziken action figure, and I'd be like. I hope it doesn't, you know, come to life and, and try to attack me. So like, I'd I'd, I'd play Banjo Kazooie and I'd be sitting on my couch and I'm like, hmm, I truly do hope the merciful God of couches decides to let me live this very day. And and then my mom is just looking at me. She's like, so like, are you good? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm fine, you know. And me being like, I don't know, ten, I just be like, no, no, I'm fine. I just don't want the couch to eat me. And she's like, hmm, hmm. Mm, yes, and this is why she came. This is why she didn't come home very often. <laughs> this is why she decided to save those lecture hours at work. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know. Anyway, uh, just collecting these three, the, collecting these pieces. Uh, this is kind of like muscle memory to me at this point. Uh, I can just talk and walk at the same time usually, simply because the the game. I feel like once you play it once, you kind of know it pretty well altogether. And. Uh, there's also a one up in the waterfall, but I don't really care about that much because you know I'm I'm probably not gonna die a lot in this game because it's a very easy game, all things considered. Like as as much as I like to gush about how fun it is, it's it's pretty easy up until like I think the later levels and up until that point you're not really dying that much anyway. So I mean if you really want like a challenging platformer, this is not the the game to look for. But also this is back to the N64 where it's like the three 3D was still in its Infam infamy, if that makes sense. Not infamy. Infancy? Baby. Yes, baby. Uh, <laughs> baby. But yeah, that's that's kind of back where the this is where this kind of started in the long run. So I really enjoy this as a a nice starting point for platform. I think this was like probably my second 3D platformer, other than like either 64 or Sunshine. This is like the the main game that like it really started with. So I I enjoy that as a. <clears throat> oh, that was gross. Oh. Excuse me, <laughs> I apologize, but that this is like the the first real 3D platformer that I ever started with. Now this is uh, where we're gonna start to really start the game because like once once we get into Grantos Castle, you can't really leave. So this is where the the game really like start starts. Like this is probably like, we're gonna have this and then I think one more cutscene and this is like that's like the end of the game. So we're just gonna cross the bridge, not end of the game, but like beginning of the game so i'm gonna cross in and then here we go bada bing bada boom the game begins and then we meet the man we meet we see, see she's like i don't know she's like trying to like trying to like bill and evie was it evie or Sida? Like bill and Sida his way and then we got klungo the chad look at this man he's got the tooth and the eyeballs oh they tried to make him Igor, but they just made him a snack. Like, how are you gonna tell me that my man's not cheeked up in that lab coat? He's got the drip. He's a real king. Don't even try to come at me with Klungo. Mm. That is a man's man. 
Yo, Klungo gang. That's that's him right there. That's him. That's that's the man right there. Don't even tell me. He says she says help, but she's just like, yo, Klungo, what you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Klungo's the man. I love Klungo. He's probably like unironically one of my favorite characters in this game, just because um, in the next game, Benjo Tui, he he has a. He's a very important character. Anyway, the main goal of this game is to collect Jiggies to go through world from world. We use Jiggies to either use Jiggies to open worlds and Jiggies kind of just show the collection progress of the game. Now this episode is probably going to start being like very like down to the wire, just like what you do in the game. Just mainly because there's there's not much else to do besides just main tutorial stuff. Even like in the next level, like it, there's not really much to do. So. Cause I don't want to keep everyone here for too long. We're probably just gonna open open the first road and then you know we just gotta our way out of there, you know. So we're gonna use the jiggy to open the world, like I said before, and then we're gonna probably end it there, just because there, I don't want to, cause I don't I don't want to start start a world and then just like leave it halfway through because just because the first one's just so short, I figured I might as well just start the first on its own. So I'm just gonna give it the, the not the respect, but like just. To boot fuck, I love that level so much. I, I remember playing it so often with the Xbox 360 demo when I before before um before I got it because I had lost my original copy of the game, and then um I played that demo I think like at least 20 times. I had 100 percent of the world at least three or four or five times before I eventually bought the game. And every time I replay the game, I just really play that level multiple times. Anyway, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this, and I hope you come back for the next one, because on the next episode, we'll be going through Mumbles Mountain, and I'll see you there. Have a good one.